Good to see everyone again. Uh, it's kind of a, one of those red letter days. Uh, that is a program you have just a couple times during the course of the year. Uh, we've already uh, uh, visited with you earlier in December uh, with our initial signing date. Now today uh, comes our traditional signing date. and We're excited about the 13 young men that uh, we're going to be bringing into the program. Uh, the the skill set that they'll bring, uh, the, the, the off the field traits, a uh, number of them are captains, a number of them are academic All-State uh, individuals. And uh, uh, again, I think uh, we did a great job identifying needs within our, within our program, within our roster. Uh, and that's one of the unique things that probably the uh, second signing date provides you uh, is a chance to go back and reflect, look at your roster. Maybe there, there's a weak spot. Uh, maybe there's a hole in your roster due to attrition, due to academics, due to injury uh, that you can address uh, in the month of January. And those were some of the things that we hope to address. Uh, one of our, our primary goals uh, going into the second signing day was just to become more athletic as a team. And, and uh, to put my uh, D coordinator cap back on, probably for a, for a brief moment here, uh, my thought process was to f try to find more athletes more young athletes that can help us on the scout teams. Uh, it always feels like during the course of a long year, and, and you know, I, I'm not discouraging long seasons by any means here at NDSU, but during the course of a long year, we always seem to run out of uh, scout team wide receivers, scout team running backs. Those guys become so critical, not only in, in, in just what we want to do offensively and defensively down the road, but in our preparation for our, our offense and defense and, and special teams. So uh, that was a, a major priority for me. Uh, and, and again, to have tools that we can utilize the uh, stretch teams uh, horizontally and vertically, uh, offensively, and then guys that fit into what we're doing uh, out of our too high safety look defensively. Um, before I get into the kids, I probably need to make comment or say a couple thank yous. Uh, again, the current staff did an unbelievable job of being thrown right into the fire, immediately getting to campus, and boom, there we go. We have uh, uh, recruits on campus. These guys had to figure out where they were going, uh, get a little bit of familiarity with, with NDSU uh, in, a, in a quick amount of, or short amount of time. Uh, Josh Cattell, who's taken over our director of football recruiting, has done an unbelievable job, one, of keeping me organized and our staff organized and continues to uh, kind of take us to uh, different areas, got us into some different uh, geographical locations as far as recruiting this year, and you can see that with some of the young men that we've signed, uh, but he does an outstanding job. Jake Otten, uh, who's now our director of football ops, did a great job of kind of behind the scenes, sometimes the uh, uh, guys who go uh, – uh, without enough appreciation, setting up the buses, setting up the faculty members that were willing to meet with these uh, new recruits uh, coming in on a Saturday uh, during the month of, of December and January uh, and even into February and meeting with these young men was, was, was big time for us. And, and all these people uh, in our administration as well, I, I, I can't, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Matt Larson, Colleen, uh, Clyde, uh, a lot of the people in this room that have helped us throughout this, this transition and the recruiting process. It, it always goes back to in recruiting relationships and, and people. And, and I think one of the easiest sells at NDSU is the people, meaning the people that we work with on a day-to-day -day, uh, situation, and then our players. Uh, our players are our number one recruiters. Uh, when, when, when our players connect with a recruit, I, I bet our batting average is pretty dang high as far as getting a commitment out of that young man on, on Sunday before he leaves, uh, before his family leave. Um, but with that, I'll, I'll go into a little bit, uh, uh, a couple you know, members of our class or of the class that we signed here uh, uh, in February. The first one, uh, we, we finally got into Texas. And, and, and probably to, to a quick story of, of why, uh, this year, uh, for those of you who were down in Frisco, we, we had an, uh, weather and, and we needed to practice inside. We practiced at Lone Star High School. Had the opportunity to sit down with the, the head football coach while our kids were getting ready for practice. And his comment was, you need to be down here. Every good football player in the Frisco, Plano, Allen area knows who the Bison are. And, and that was probably the... Uh, the, the, what sealed it for me, thinking that we need to get down there and, and, and see what we could do. And uh, this, was, this is not a first-time deal. Uh, Coach Williams uh, was down there, did an outstanding job. Coach Hedberg had some connections down there as well. Uh, and we look to continue to recruit the Frisco, Plano, Allen area uh, for years to come. But the, uh, the first recruit that I'll talk about is DJ Baptiste. Uh, just got his paperwork in here about noon today. Uh, and so a lot of you probably have paperwork that might say only 12 commits. Uh, DJ's a wide receiver from Hutto, Texas, which is near um, 
Austin, uh, the connection we have with him, his high school coach used to be the head football coach at Rochester Community College. And so a number of us had either recruited that area, got to know uh, Coach Plant that way, and uh, made it for an easy transition, allowed Coach Hedberg to get into the school and, and do a great job. We had him and his mother up here this last weekend, uh, even with the cold weather. Uh, we could talk uh, you know, a native of Texas into coming back up to, uh, uh, to North Dakota State, and uh, the young man liked what he saw, but uh, you, know, you talk about a young, 1,100 receiving yards last year. Uh, he had, uh, and, and again, a captain. Uh, and a difference maker for us. Uh, the other Texas uh, signing we had was Braylon Henderson. Braylon's from Plano East. Just to give you a little bit of a uh, idea, Plano East is about six to seven thousand students in the high school. Uh, pretty competitive, I would think. If 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 you're the starting slot receiver, you got to be pretty dang good down there. Uh, he participates in track as well. Uh, he's a 10-6, uh, and and if not faster, 10-6, 10-5, 100 meter kid. Uh, Going to be an inside, inside receiver for us. Uh, you know, super excited about his ability. One, being able to stretch the field, but also creating mismatches in the slot against you know, big safeties or, or linebackers that want to try to defend him. Um, you know, new areas, again, that, that we, we reached into uh, was Gwinnett County in, in Georgia. And Gwinnett County, for those of you not familiar with it, makes up the majority of the Atlanta area. Uh, we signed a, a running back by the name of Kobe Johnson. Uh, Kobe was all Gwinnett, played in the all Gwinnett All-Star game. Uh, outstanding, played a little bit receiver and running back. Uh, we look to utilize him at the running back position this year. Uh, an explosive player. You watch his highlight. Uh, easy to see why. Uh, we, we liked what we saw. A uh, young man that's going to get in the weight room, another track athlete as well that's going to bring some speed to the program. And then lastly is Dominic Jones. Uh, Dominic Jones is from uh, Peachtree Ridge High School uh, in Gwinnett County as well. He was the uh, also in Gwin Gwinnett County All-Star Game. He's a 6'2", 185-pound free safety. Uh, if I were to compare him to one of our uh, more recent players, I would say Trey Dempsey, except he has two inches on Trey. Uh, unbelievably long athlete, uh, was receiving interest from Louisville, a lot of Conference USA schools, and again, got up here. He was one of those young men, not a big social media uh, individual, not on Twitter a bunch, not on uh, Instagram. So he kind of, his, his commitment, thank goodness, all right, was kind of, you know, undercover and was probably a good thing because as many of you know, the minute kids start looking at NDSU, the entire country likes to get involved or start taking a peek into these kids. So uh, going to be a difference maker, was a captain, captain for his team as well. Uh, he has two brothers that are Division I athletes. One runs track at Western Carolina and the other plays uh, wide receiver at Kennesaw State. Uh, moving back into Minnesota, a little bit closer to home, uh, Logan Gratz. Uh, wide receiver, uh, or excuse me, quarterback from uh, uh, River Falls. Uh, kind of have a unique uh, story with him. Uh, he's connected to the program. Mom was an All-American track athlete here. He uh, was originally committed to us as a preferred walk-on, uh, then decommitted from the walk-on and became a, was going to be a gopher for a little while. And then, uh, as, as many of you, us have talked about and, and uh, in the earlier signing date, uh, we lost a quarterback, and so the need for us to find a scholarship quarterback was out there. Uh, Coach Hedberg had an unbelievable relationship with him and his family, which made it easy for us to get back in the home, do a home visit, get him on campus a couple times prior to his commitment. But Logan's going to be a special athlete, 6'4", uh, 190 pounds, probably has room to grow, a uh, former hockey player. Uh, you know, families all in, especially with mom being a, being a former Bison. I think they had a super uh, visit this last weekend and look forward to big things of, uh, in the future from him. Uh, a couple other kids that just uh, I need to make sure that I make comment of. Cameron Smith, St. Petersburg, Florida. Again, we continue to recruit the Polk County area in Florida. It's been good to us over the course of the last five, six years. Uh, Coach Polly's done an outstanding job getting down in there. Uh, and, and, connect, and connecting with the high school coaches and continue to develop those, those relationships that we've had. Uh, Cameron's a DB, probably another free safety slash corner type uh, from Admiral Fargo uh, High School, which is a private school down there in St. Pete. And uh, you know, I'm looking 11 interceptions, 17 pass breakups uh, in, his, in his career as a starting DB for them. Uh, we did have to uh, talk him out of uh, his – he was originally committed to a CAA program. And, uh, again, once we get him up here on campus and get him around our players and our staff, uh, uh, those commitments seem to, to go to the side. Uh, 
uh, but excited to have him. Uh, a few other, another Florida native is Hunter Brazio. Uh, Hunter is a long snapper linebacker. He was the 2018 large school defensive player of the year in the state of Florida. He had over 400 tackles in his time. Came up to camp, uh, did an outstanding job, not only as a linebacker, but as a long snapper. Again, going to add some depth uh, and, and, and hopefully you know, we, we can create a little competition at that position. Ross Kennelly did an outstanding job for us in 2018, but again, to, to be able to have two long snappers on the roster uh, just adds depth to, to our special teams immediately. Um, some other names, Zach Gottwalt from uh, Royalton High School over in Minnesota, big 6'4", 200-pound tight end. Uh, I think Coach Kramer's going to have uh, a good time with this young man, big frame that's going to fill out, uh, excited about where he's at. Was utilized more in high school as a flex tight end, uh, understands route running. We just need to get him on the line a little bit and, and, and get his blocking up to speed, but he's going to fit into that Chiefs uh, meeting room really well. Uh, Jacob Halverson, right down the road uh, from Castleton, wide receiver, had over 1,800 yards in his career. Uh, grew, you know, I had an individual meeting with him, told me he grew up being a Bison fan, and so I knew we, we had a good one in hand uh, the minute I heard that. But uh, exciting to have him. He'll add some depth to that wide receiver room uh, and, and co for Coach Pauly. Uh, other kids, Austin Schiff, a running back from Springfield, Illinois. Uh, Austin's father is from Dickinson. North Dakota, and again, you know, people reaching out. Uh, it's funny, uh, when, when I was sitting with, uh, with the shifts one-on-one, -on -one, uh, his dad didn't tell me he was from Dickinson. He utilized the term, I'm from where Levi Jordan's from. So that told me right then we had some big Bison fans, right? And uh, he's had family that goes here. He has two aunts that live in town. Uh, so this is where he'd, want, he'd wanted to be and, and excited to have him be, uh, become part of the program as well. Uh, a couple others uh, just to clean up and, and to finish up our class, Gennaro Watham Ochama, uh, a DB, a corner from Woodbury, Minnesota. Uh, he was All-State, All-Metro, USA, USA Today, All-State, uh, going to add some long length to the corner room, uh, excited to have him as well. Uh, Braden Zerhoff, a running back, from Western North Dakota, nine-man All-State player this last year, 2,100 yards, 35 touchdowns. Uh, again, uh, having Coach Hedberg on staff, uh, that there isn't a high school kid in the state we don't know about. And, uh, you know, again, a, a young man that's wanted to be a Bison his whole career. Uh, parents showed up, decked, decked out in Bison gear from, from head to toe. So, you know, we had a pretty good inclination in the first five minutes that we might land this young man. Uh, and then lastly, uh, one of the newest ones just committed to us yesterday, uh, a young man from Aurora Christian High School uh, in North Aurora, Illinois, Caleb Beebe. Uh, for those of you who the name sounds familiar, his uncle is Don Beebe, who, who did play for the Green Bay Packers at one time. That's the only reason why Coach Gazer knows who he is. Um, but uh, excited to have him. He's going to be a DB for us. Uh, had an excellent career. Uh, had 1,100 yards receiving last year. 62 tackles. We'll add, again, more depth to that uh, safeties room uh, and, and, and to Code Green as we move forward. But, uh, you know, overall, we, we signed kids. If you look at the uh, first signing date as well, 10 different states were represented by our signing class. We had roughly 25 all-state individuals. And, and I think the thing that's most unique is we had about a dozen kids who were either the player of the year in their, in their region or in the state. Uh, you know, we're, we're able to find difference makers, kids that are not only good fits for us, but people out there are recognizing them as the best uh, and they have the best skill set. And so these kids are going to come in and do some great things for us. Uh, you know, now becomes the tough part. Uh, now becomes the, the retention part and, and the development part. And, and we'll do that with, with both, both our academics and, and within the weight room and get these kids up to speed. Uh, you know, I can't tell you how good a class they're going to be. Ask me in three years. Uh, and, and I'll hopefully have a better insight. But right now on paper, I feel really good about what we've done and what our staff's put together as a, as a signing class. At this time, I'll, I'll uh, answer any questions that I can. Yeah, describe going to Georgia. That's a state that has not been familiar, at least in the Division One era. Why was that important? Is that a state you think you can get back into going forward? Well, it's something that we've, we've talked about. And a year ago, uh, Coach Williams was down there, uh, and we did not sign anyone out of there. But I think looking back at it, probably spending some time there, got the logo out, got the name out. Uh, all of a sudden, Zeb Nolan being here at semester, uh, I made comment earlier in December that his dad's a high school coach, and I think his dad was able to 
give us some insight on, on where in Gwinnett County we need to go, uh, maybe w- what areas are, are under-recruited. Uh, it, it's a, an area that is, is, uh, has a ton of, of college level and, and Division I type players. Uh, I think we'll continue to go down there looking for skilled kids, uh, long athletic kids that can help us, maybe at the receiver, at the DB position, outside linebacker spot. How important was it for you guys to get a high school scholarship quarterback in this class? Well, it's our philosophy. We want to get a high school quarterback, uh, a scholarship quarterback every year. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden when, when you miss a class, uh, it, it kind of throws your numbers off. And, and then all, or you're, you're walking on a kid. And so to find a scholarship player and to find one that we felt comfortable with. Uh, you know, if we were to all of a sudden go out there, there's probably a ton of kids throughout the country that were interested in us. But... We needed to know what we were getting. We wanted to know the skill set. As I said, Logan had been at camp, had worked for three days with Coach Hedberg. We knew what we were getting with Logan, felt comfortable about going back. At one time, we were good enough for him, and, and, and we just needed to, to get him back on campus, and I think he saw uh, that this was the right place for him. Is that five quarterbacks now? Yes. And are, any plans to talk to anybody about moving? Or? Nope. What you see is what we get, got right now as, okay. far, as far as the quarterback position. Uh, anticipate. With 38 guys, don't you? Do you anticipate attrition here? This is a huge class to sign. Well, you got to remember, Don, we had a huge class of seniors as well. And, uh, you know, we had 24 seniors leave. Uh, there's always injury, uh, academics, and other attrition that we need to take account in. Uh, but at the same time, there were some holes, I felt like, in, in, the, in the 110 fall camp roster that we had. Uh, we needed to make sure we had enough legs at the receiver position. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, a year ago, we only had four quarterbacks. Now we have five. You know, so, I mean, there are some you know, unique it, – it's, it's kind of a, a, a long, drawn-out equation to make sure that we have the right – amount of people at each position so we can effectively practice within our uh, double rep system. How solidifying was it for you, uh, just in the guys you chose, the men you hired, to see them out recruiting Bison football uh, and what they were able to, to come back with? Well, he did an unbelievable job. I mean, it, you know, just like in recruiting, you want to hire people that want to be here. And, and, and all these coaches saw this as a, as a great opportunity. They, they jumped in with both feet, learned as much as they could, as quickly as they could. Uh, if, if we weren't out seeing 2019 recruits uh, or, or, or potential recruits, we were out there already working on 2020 recruits. And uh, it's something that you have to do every day. Uh, it, it's more than a year process these days. It's, it's you know, a year and a half with the new signing date. We have to be fully vested, and, and we're already involved in our 2020 class. So these guys have, have, have got going and, and, and got into their areas. We tried to find recruiting areas that both of them maybe or all of them had some sort of connection with previously or an easy transition into. After the, the initial the sign, or press conference, or you might be interested in the transfer market. Are there still doors that you're kind of looking in there, whether it's a grad transfer or anything like that, or are you pretty pretty feel comfortable down? with where we're at right now? Uh, you know, I, I think our next step is to is to get into our development phase. Uh, our morning running starts next week. Uh, get back into the weight room, familiarize ourselves with our own team, uh, and, and I think we wouldn't probably even look into any of that till later in the spring. Follow up to the previous question. So the largest class in Division One for NDSU, was there that much scholarship money available or did you spread it out more? Uh, probably a little bit of both, uh, Jeff. You know, we spread it out, but we did have uh, a, a large amount of scholarship money wrapped up into the 24 seniors that, that, walked, that uh, played their last game in Frisco in January. So it was probably a little bit of both. We, we had uh, some available counters that were out there. Uh, we, we still can only have 85 kids on scholarship, so you know we're still following NCAA protocol, even though it's the biggest class out there. 11 lockdowns is a big, fairly big number too. Is what's your philosophy there? Is it, as long as they're willing to come and play, you'll give them a shot, or what's, uh, your, no, what's your deal? Uh, probably not. You know they need to be the right walk on. Uh, I think we, we've been spoiled here with great walk-ons. You, you just go back to last year, Aaron Steidel and, and Levi Jordan were two walk-ons that turned into scholarship players. Uh, I think we're looking for the very best walk-on. Uh, I'm not looking for a bunch of Jimmy and Joes that just want to play football. That's not what we're here for. Uh, we got to find kids that fill a role and, and, and meet a fit, uh, as well as athletically and academically, to, to make it and be successful at NDSU. Were you able to enjoy this process at all now as a head coach? I think I enjoyed the process when I was a defensive coordinator as well. Uh, I think just some of the differences are I got to make a connection with, with all the players now in previous years. Uh, most of my attention was either 
uh, with the defensive kids and maybe a little bit with the scout team quarterback just to make sure that that young man understood the responsibility that he was stepping into. Matt, how many did you know of these recruits? Sorry. Matt, how many did you know of these recruits beforehand, or did you have to introduce yourself once you became head coach? I had, had to introduce most, you know, a uh, few of them we, we, we had on campus prior to uh, the holidays, uh, but for the most part, we had to reintroduce ourselves to a lot of these recruits. It was a, you know, a, a, a one-month uh, relationship we tried to create with a lot of these people, but uh, when you have good people that are get on the road and uh, we have a lot of good people on this campus, it makes it easy to, to, to show off what we have and what we have to offer at NDSU. You've been on the job now for a month. Anything that has taken you by surprise? Anything that is you've learned in their first month on the job? I have to talk a lot more than I'm used to. Uh, that's probably the one thing that I'm still adjusting to. Those of you who know me, I'm, I'm probably a relatively quiet person, and uh, uh, but it, I'm getting used to it. You mentioned you dabbled in some of these states. You'd built some connections in years past, but this is the first year actually signing guys from some of these states. What was that relationship like? I know you mentioned the coach in Texas said people know who you are, but are you even more surprised by the awareness of NDSU in some of these other places? You haven't uh, surprised by the awareness, Beth. I think what we were shocked was maybe the the power of the of our branding that's out there nationally right now, uh, and that how the kids you know, re relate to the Bison, but then at the same time, you know, Coach Buddha was down there in Texas and he comes back and says, you should see how big a shield store they're building in Frisco. Well, okay, so those kids are familiar with who we are and, 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 and Fargo's familiar with them. I think it was just a matter of time. Uh, we've been, you know, I think every year we thought about getting down there. Uh, it's just, when's enough enough? I mean, our, our program is only so big. We only have so many hands that can, that can do the work. You don't want to stretch yourself to a point where you're not doing a good job in our, in our local you know, area. And that's the last thing we ever want to do is not feel like we're putting in the time in the upper Midwest. That when you do see a class that is this spread out geographically, do you have to kind of reassess where you're you're spending resources as far as the coach's time and, and where you're getting into? A little bit. We talked about that as a staff. I mean, there's certain areas that uh, are in our in our normal geographical area that we've recruited in the past that we maybe will we'll take down to a secondary emphasis and, and put more emphasis maybe in the Dallas Frisco. Uh, now, we, we, we use the word Dallas, you know, Metroplex pretty loosely. We're recruiting 13 schools down there. And, and, and I told Coach, because it'll turn into a rabbit hole if we don't. And I've already had conversation with Coach Williams because everyone's going to want to tell him to go chasing all over. 13 schools is all we're recruiting. Frisco, Plano, Allen, and that's it. So we're not trying to add too many schools or overwhelm our staff. What does it feel like to be the closer, like that you, <laughs> that you were the guy, the last one that, to talk to these guys? It was good. I mean, it was, it was probably some, some candid conversations with parents. Uh, sometimes there was conversations that the parents and the, and the athletes didn't like. Uh, I knew that was part of the, uh, the, the job description. Yeah, it, was, it was good. Uh, you know, it, it seemed like we did okay, but I think uh, I was, it was the easy part. You know, I, sometimes I'm the guy that gets to reap the rewards of all the success and all the work that our staff puts in. Uh, the kids call me to commit, but uh, the guys who stand behind you are the ones that do all the work. Matt, how is this uh, signing day different, the second signing day different than what you have in the first time go around? Well, I think the second day gives you an, an, an opportunity to go back and, and, and reevaluate your, your first signing date, reevaluate your roster, and, and to see maybe where there are some holes, where there are some weaknesses. Uh, because of the length of our season going into January, uh, if there are any injuries that, that are going to be you know, season-ending, cause issues, are there academic issues? I mean, we, we get a real good scope of where we're at. Uh, and then you know, we're going to utilize the – uh, the media, uh, the energy, the excitement that we create by playing the national championship to try to go out and find the very best kids we can. How's the, uh, oh, sorry. How's the um, competition for these Georgia kids? Uh, it, was, it was good. Yeah, uh, you know, All of them had a number of schools. You know, the, the schools that you would anticipate hearing, uh, the Mercers, uh, Kennesaw State, uh, but you, you did hear the, some more group of five schools uh, showing up down there. I think one of the things that, that – sets ourselves apart from a lot of the schools that recruit Georgia uh, is, is you'll see some schools go down there and just throw out a bunch of blanket offers. Uh, we went down there and, and, and just recruited a couple kids that were going to fit our needs. And, and, and that's not how we operate is just, you know, 100 or 200 offers out there. We're going to make, you know, 
offers and, and they're all committable to kids. You guys have had a full year now to utilize it. How much has the four game rule kind of been brought into the way that you guys recruit and what are you kind of telling kids with the use of this new rule? Well, I think the first thing we try to utilize or show the examples of, of Tony Pierce. His fourth game was the national championship game. There's a young man from Auburndale, Florida that, uh, you know, is going to get four seasons plus uh, as far as eligibility goes or game experience. We're going to try to utilize it the most we can, uh, get kids opportunities. So when they do or are called upon to be the guy, it's not the first time under the lights. It's not the first time on a charter plane flying to wherever we might have a game that week. Uh, trying to give them some experience so when it is their opportunity that they feel comfortable in their role. Uh, you know, again, my philosophy, I told the staff the other day, uh, it, it's I believe that kids who line up farthest away from the ball at the snap uh, have an easier transition in college or uh, can play earlier in their career. Uh, I challenged our staff with, with the kids in the secondary, the wide receivers. You know, there may be one or two of those guys that we need to develop like the Phoenix Sproles of the world, like the Christian Watsons of the world, and get those guys to be able to, to perform for us. They might not be ready right away, uh, but you know what? Phoenix Sproles play, had some big catches down the road in our playoff run. Overall, if you look at this class, I know you mentioned a couple of the traits that you were after, but what, how would you describe this class as a whole, uh, including some of those guys in December and what you guys were after? I think we got a, a, a bunch of really good football players, and that's the number one thing we have to find. Uh, I, you know, you go back to the, the four linebackers we signed, uh, all physical, big, long kids, defensive linemen, the most art twins from the first. Uh, you know, one of the unique things we did, I'm going to go on a sidebar here, is, is, is when we were recruiting this time because of the new staff, a lot of our staff was out meeting the kids we signed the first go around. You know, Coach Blazik was in the home of all the committed kids because we needed to start creating a relationship right there. But the one thing I heard people and our new staff come back was, wow, these are impressive kids right now. Uh, you talk about Hunter Pontius and, and, and Jake Rock over at, at Kettle Moraine and the Mostart twins. I had a chance to watch them play basketball because uh, the head coach down at Lakeville North is an NDSU alum, uh, and they're ranked second in the state. You talk about, you know, Eli is 6'4", 250 pounds right now, you know, and, and running up and down the court. I mean, those are things that get you excited about the kids we have. Athletic, big, long kids is what we were looking for. Uh, I think we answered everything that we needed in, in both the first signing date, the second signing date. Uh, I, you know, I, it's, it's too early to say that it was a home run, but I feel good about it on paper. You mentioned the young man is not very active on social media. How much has recruiting changed in the last few years in that aspect and, um, you know, the difficulties that come up with that? Well, I think, one, it's, it's a way that you can connect with kids or get them to get a little bit of a knowledge about your program without at, having to call or to have face-to-face -face interaction. You see, I think our staff is on social media quite a bit, either retweeting a, a tweet, uh, Following, seeing what Coach Blazik's going to put on social media next uh, would be the be the next thing. Um, but I, I think it's valuable, especially for kids out of our area, kids who struggle to get here. A lot of those 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 small graphics that that are that are. Uh, people here do, or those sm short videos of what game day's like is, is critical in their evaluation. I mean, they're, they're seeing and they're getting a feel of, of what they're getting themselves into or what they're coming to visit prior to arriving. Uh, previous head coaches here haven't used social media much. Do you see that changing with you? Uh, I think I'll continue to use it. Uh, I don't know if I use it too much or not enough. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll retweet when I need to, and, and I'll tweet – uh, but I, I, I probably don't get over the top on it. Kids keep things on the down low, you know. I mean, well, no, yeah, on the other way, we probably make sure that they understand that once we do give an offer or we start recruiting, that things are probably going to heat up, and and, and that that attention and, and that uh, you know those other schools starting to reach out is a byproduct of the Bison being involved. And it's it's funny how uh, when that does happen, a lot of the parents do say, "Coach, you, you told us that was going to happen." And it does. Uh, but we understand that. Uh, our, our coaches, we feel like we have a great product here. We have a great institution to sell. Uh, we don't have anything to hide. So uh, there's no reason. We want kids to celebrate it and to get out there because uh, at the same time, they're, uh, there's other, they, they follow each other. And the more we can get the logo out there, the better. How frustrating is it when you do all the legwork on a recruit like that for them to get interest in you only to then draw interest from other bigger programs? That's part of, it's part of the routine. And so... Uh, 
it is what it is. And we got a great staff and a great program. And I'm going to worry about the kids that we get, not the ones that we don't.